Hello, Mythodac. Welcome to Titan's Vault. This prison is inescapable, so don't even try. And if you're thinking about visitors, you can forget it. This prison is surrounded by a chunk van. You will stay here until your life sentence is served. Have a wonderful day. Challenge accepted. Currently, the internet has been overrun with new inescapable prisons. Some are soulless cash grabs, some are extremely secure. But while I was escaping Pandora's vault, a bunch of you ladies told me about a specific prison called the Obelisk. I checked it out and what I first thought was, yes, finally, a prison that doesn't have vault in the name. I could escape it, I used a lectern and a bed, and I escaped by getting out of the cell and parkouring through the inside of the prison on the redstone line bridges. But as I was working on this video, Mining Blob made a new prison, supposedly even stronger. Then I stopped what I was doing and took a look at the new prison, Titan's Vault and what I saw horrified me. This prison is astounding and quite sophisticated. As the title of this video says, it is extremely tall. I dare say the tallest prison in Minecraft. It has even more thorough kill checks than its predecessor, and an even better cell than Poseidon and Hades Vault combined. This time, every redstone line is protected by dozens of layers of obsidian, so there's no room to walk outside of the rooms. And also, this time, it is absolutely impossible for a friend to break in from the outside and get you, because the entire prison is surrounded by a chunk ban. A chunk ban is when a chunk has too much information for your client to handle, so it kicks you off the server. So this means that I'm going to have to get out without any outside help. This won't be anything new, of course. Also, this is going to be version 2 of this prison. Apparently, a few people escaped the first prison, so they patched all the flaws in this new version. Now, without any more stalling, let's see what awaits us inside of this thing. To start, you go inside the portal from the outside and then re-enter from the nether, and then you're inside the prison. But be prepared, the trip to the cell is a bit cramped. It is already small when you get out of the portal, but it is about to get a lot smaller as you get compacted into one block and swim into the kill check. There's hoppers everywhere, so if you try and throw down items, they will be sent to the guard. The guard opens the netherite doors individually, you put your items in the locker, you tap the bed, you get killed, and then you spawn on the other side. If you try to blow up this window, there's a netherite wall that will automatically close. When you spawn on the other side of the wall, you're in this tunnel. You walk to a one-person door that detects if two people are standing on the pressure plate, and once you're through that, you go to the second floor, where you crawl through a lava tunnel and go up a bubble elevator. The guard then opens this netherite door to let you through, and then here is where two paths diverge. If you are a visitor, then you get a pearl from the guard and throw it into a stasis chamber and set your spawn so that you can be warped out of the cell. But if you are a prisoner, then you must go up the bubble elevator, set your spawn at the bed, and then once you wake up, you will drop down into the cell. The cell is somewhat similar to the cells in the obelisk and Poseidon's vault, but instead it has a basalt generator. You have droppers full of bread and lots of lights so that no mobs will spawn, and the floor is covered with water so that nobody can course through inside of the cell. If you somehow manage to die, then you will be respawned in the ceiling, in an obsidian box. Then you will be dropped back down. And let me tell you, this cell almost broke me. It was superior to every other cell I've seen in every way. Not only are the walls regenerating, but you can't reach the bed. It's behind obsidian and it's dozens of blocks up into the air. You can't take fall damage to die, you can't drown to die, and on top of that, it looks good. Also, in the obelisk, the guards had no way to look at you, but here they have a composter glitch that lets you look into the cell one second at a time. It just seems too good. This prison seems too advanced to be broken out of. All of the previous flaws are fixed, and this has improved on every prison, in every other way. But as they say, the taller they stand, the harder they fall. Alright, so there's a few things that I need to get out of the way before I go in. Number one, it seems like there is only room for one guard in this prison. If there were more, then I don't know what the other one would do, so I'm assuming that there's one guard. 
Number two, this prison can't be built at world spawn, because the way that the visitors get out of this prison is by getting killed so that they spawn outside of the prison, so killing myself is a viable option to escape. And number three, when I loaded the map there were command blocks that were on the ground that I destroyed for cinematic shots, but after the fact I realized that they might have been the Elder Guardian spawners, so I'm just assuming that there will be mining fatigue administered every time an Elder Guardian detects that you don't have it like normal. Make sense? Also, I'm going to have Mining Fatigue 1, just to take the strain off of the editing process. But it won't really change anything, it will just take longer in real time. Speaking of real time, this plan will take a lot of patience. A lot of time is required to get out. But I don't have a clock on my back for nothing. The first thing that I'm gonna have to do is bring in anything I want really. It doesn't really matter, but I must make sure that I bring in a milk bucket. What I'm going to do is put everything but the milk into the barrel. I'm going to right click the bed, and then right before I get killed, I'm going to drink the milk bucket. The bucket will get sent into the guard's barrel, but that's fine. Even if they see me drink it, they can't do anything. Also, it might stall them for a brief minute. Now, I don't know why this is here, but for some reason, there is a barrel in the first hallway, and it is filled to the brim with wooden hose. And when you take out hose, hoppers filter in more hose into it. I don't know why this is here, but I will take advantage of it. As soon as I respawn, I need to immediately start mining the barrel. This is one of the only places in the prison where the guard can't see me, and since I drank the milk, I won't have mining fatigue for another minute or so. I take the barrel with me, and I leave the hose around the corner just so I don't clutter up my inventory. Then I move on through the rest of the prison normally. I must do everything that the guard tells me exactly so that he won't be suspicious of anything, all up until I go up to the last bubble elevator, because before I get into the bed, I need to mine the sign below it. Now if I got here in a minute or so, then I can break it in a few seconds. But if I get mining fatigue 3, then I need to use a more unconventional method. Now me and the guard will probably be in a voice call or typing in the chat to communicate. So all I need to do is give him some excuse to make him think that I'm AFK, such as saying, sorry, my mom came into my room, or I'm going to the bathroom, BRB. Then I hold perfectly still and start breaking the sign. But if the guard, for some reason, breaks out of his guard chambers and comes up to check on me while I'm AFK, then I will just stop breaking the block when I see his name tag coming up the bubble elevator. And when he leaves, I'll start again. But this is highly unlikely because when you get up this bubble elevator, there's no way to get back down, and the guard would have to break out of his chamber. So the guard would have to destroy a large part of his prison just to come up and look at me when I'm AFK. As soon as I get the sign into my inventory, then I say something like, sorry, I'm back. What do I do next? And then they will tell me to click the bed. And then once I leave the bed, I will be trapped in the prison. Here's where the patience kicks in. You see, I'm gonna have to try and know when the guard is sleeping or when they are off Minecraft. If they get off Minecraft at certain times, then I can just memorize that, but if they don't get off specifically, and they get off more randomly throughout the day, then I'll just make my move right after they log off. But what if the guard never logs off Minecraft? Somehow, they manage to never restart their computer, never close off of Minecraft, and stay connected to the server all the time. Well, then I have a plan for that as well. You see, from Mining Blob's video, he sounded like he was from the UK. Just to make sure, I used some lighthearted banter to ask if he was, and of course he fell for the bait. Now I know what time zone he is probably in. So I will wait until it is the middle of the night, in BST or GMT, depending on what part of the year it is in, because the human body cannot forego sleep forever. But even if the guard managed to look at me using the composter glitch, they can only see the cell from a very weird angle. It's hard to see some parts of the cell. Either way, whenever I feel it is the best time to strike, then I do so. This escape is not for the faint of heart. It will take a long time. But I'm up for the challenge. <laughs> What I first do is break this bottom basalt and immediately replace it with the barrel. Then I mine all of the basalt above it as far as I can reach. Then I break the barrel and ride the elevator up to the top, place it down again, break more blocks, and then do that again until I am right here. You see the bed respawn points are blocked and unblocked by pistons that are on a redstone clock, so I'm going to have to time this just right. When the piston opens, I'm going to place the sign on this block. 
This disables this side of the bed trap. One side down, one to go. Now for the other side, I'm actually going to use a glitch to make it easier for me. Now normally, I would get bullied in the comments for using a glitch to help me escape, but the guards are already using multiple chunk bands, using command blocks to place in elder guardians, and using a composter glitch to spy on me, so I think that it's a little bit justified. What I do is break the barrel beneath me, and then if I stand on the edge of the block and hold shift, I can glitch on this side of the wall as the base salt regenerates. All I do here is place the barrel above the netherite block when it opens, and now the bed is obstructed. Victory is within my clutches. Now I just need to find a way to die, because as I discussed earlier, that is extremely hard to do in this cell. There is no way to take fall damage, there's no automatic kill prisoner lockdown of any sort, and even if somehow I manage to get into a swimming position, there's a conduit so that I don't drown so I'm going to have to trick Minecraft into killing me. Since I'm glitched in the side of a wall, what I must do is kill myself by walking backwards into it. Since I'm shifting, the wall won't push me out, and Minecraft will think that I'm stuck inside the block and start suffocating me, making my health go lower and lower until I die and respawn at the world spawn point. And with that, I escape from my greatest challenge yet. Titan's Vault. completely alone in this world. You... you won't put me in prison, right? <sighs> but now I'm free. But am I actually? You stay here. There's someone I need to see. something. Someone has been imprisoning me over and over, or making some of their henchmen make prisons for me and keeping me in them. The first few times I was courteous, and I asked them why I was being imprisoned, but I never got an answer. Plumpkin, should I go after this person? Should I pursue revenge even after all. I don't know. But there's no use in waiting around to get imprisoned again, is there? 